and discovery. Interrogatories, request for production. Yes, give it to me. I love it. Said no paralegal ever. I don't care who you are. I don't like answering written discovery, but why is that? Why do we as paralegals hate answering written discovery? If we're billing by the hour, then it's probably a good thing. But when you're not and you're working on a contingency fee basis for plaintiffs, then getting through written discovery is sometimes really exhaustive. Stick with me today and I'm gonna teach you how you can engage with your clients and get that discovery answered in a form that is much easier for them to understand. How many of you have seen this meme right here? Yes, nobody likes to answer written discovery and it's because it's sometimes really difficult to get our clients to answer discovery. If we are sending them interrogatories and requests for protection, they're looking at a bunch of legalese language that they really don't understand. So as paralegals, it's really up to us to break it down and put it in a format where they understand it. However, I don't want to spend two hours on the phone and I most certainly don't want to spend two to three hours in a conference. Again, I'm working for a plaintiff based company, so I'm not billing by the hour. If you're billing by the hour, once again, this may be a good thing for you, but any insurance company is probably going to narrow down the time that you bill for answering written discovery. They're going to cut it. So how do you deal with those situations? Well, I'm gonna hop over to my computer here in a little bit and show you. I'm gonna show you how to use Microsoft Office Forms to work with your clients to get that written discovery answered. If you don't have Office 365 and you don't have the availability to use Microsoft Forms, then there are other platforms out there which I'll go over at the end of this tutorial. Something that I really firmly believe in is time is the most valuable, precious, unrenewable resource. We can't get it back. We can't get back that time. So we need to create efficiency in our practice. We need to develop things that will help to create efficiency in our practice and Microsoft Forms will definitely do that for you. Okay guys, taking a look at my screen right here, I want you to open Microsoft Office and go to Forms. Once you locate Forms in your apps, go ahead and click on your Microsoft Forms and you will see here that there is a dashboard here where you can create your forms or quizzes. You can share them with people and within a group. So I'm gonna click on new form and right here you'll see that there is a new form that's generated here. And then we're gonna start right here from this new form and click on a title. Okay, so for purposes of this tutorial, say that this was actual discovery and we are going to say Smith versus Brown. And next we want to say what it is and why they're answering this. You can see that we have a choice. We have text, we have rating, we have date, and we have some more options down in here. For most questions, unless they're yes or no, then you're gonna want to click this text. So let's ask a text question right now. Yes, we got that. And you can put in your question right here. So we'll say, please state your name, address, date of birth and social security number. Okay, that's going to be a court question that is required and it might get a little long. So we want to say that yes, we want the long answer. So that is question number one. Now we click add new and we can ask question number two. So say we want a choice. Have you lived at your address for longer than two years? So they can say yes, or they can say no, and you can give them other options if you'd like. One thing that they can't give you is multiple answers, but you still want it to be required. Now you can see that this is question two. 
Of course, we're not going to want to move this up, but in the event lower down, you ask some questions that you need moved, you can always choose to make this question number one and have this be question number two. What you will see is this little asterisk right here. That means that this question is required. And if I click down into this answer here, you can see that this one has an asterisk as well. So that's basically the process that you go through and you ask as many questions as you would like. Again, you've got multiple avenues of how you can ask these questions. So once you're done asking all these questions, now you want to choose perhaps your theme. You don't have to necessarily go with this boring theme that's right here. You can make things a little bit more dynamic if you want to. If we click on this theme button right here and want to make it a little fun or perhaps a different color, say we want to go purple or we want some octopus because we're going to do this in a classroom or say we want a park. Um, you can basically choose different themes and once you're done, you can preview how it's going to look for the other side. This is how it would look on the computer and this is how it is generated on a mobile application. So as you can see, the questions that you're answering can be answered from anywhere. They don't necessarily have to be on their computer. They can ask these through their internet browser or Microsoft Forms application on their mobile devices. Once you are done with all of your questions, you will click this share button and you can say that you just want to collect responses from the people within your organization or anybody with a link. If you are requesting that your clients or anybody outside of your organization um, give you these responses, then of course you need to click anyone with this link. You can just copy this link and put it in an email or you can auto generate an email through here. You can um, get a duplicate of this form because you can create templates here. Um, you can share it collaboratively. And one of the other things that you need to look at is settings here. Anytime you get a response, you can click this little button here and I will show you anytime you got a response, uh, send you some notifications. There's all sorts of things that you can do within Microsoft Forms here. Um, there is some branching that you can do if you ask a particular question and they say yes. And based upon that question, if they say yes, you can ask them another one. Um, that's a little bit more of a convoluted process. And for purposes of this tutorial, I just wanted to go over the basic questioning right here. Okay, so obviously I can't show you any discovery questions and answers I've gotten from actual clients, but I'm also a volleyball coach, as some of you may have already known. And sometimes I have to gather information from volleyball players and their parents in order to get from point A to point B. So here's something that I did recently. Okay, so here is a volleyball questionnaire I recently put together because my team was having a really hard time bonding. So I put together a list of nine questions hoping that I can get some ideas from the players and their parents on some bonding. And here are the responses that I got. I got seven. If I take a look at this response tab, I can see that the last person responded took three minutes and 36 seconds. And in total, I got seven responses. I can export this to an Excel spreadsheet if I wanted to, which is especially good if you are gathering information from a lot of people like a class action or a toxic tort case. When you have questions that are asked in things like yes or no, those things come into a pie shaped format. So I had six yeses, which was 86% and I had one no, which was 14% of my total overall answers that I got. And if I look at view results, I can look at them per responder. So I've got respondent one, I've got my respondent two, respondent three, and so on. So respondent three took two minutes and 55 seconds. Respondent two took five minutes and seven seconds. 
so you can really see how much time people are spending on your forms, how much time that they're taking to complete those forms. You can toggle through it right here, or you can toggle through it on this up and down arrow right here. Again, you can print any of these responses, you can export them to Excel, you can even tie them to your SharePoint group address. So let's take a look at that real quick and how you tie everything in. Okay guys, as you can see here, Smith B. Brown has one response. And of course that was the response that I just gave. So I can go in here and take a look at this response and take a look at these questions right here and how they were answered. But how do we incorporate that into our Microsoft Office group? Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna click this tab right here, these three dots next to the active, and I want to get a summary link. That will generate a link for your forms. I want to copy this link, navigate to my Microsoft Office 365 SharePoint site that I've created, go into documents, and navigate to the folder that I want this form to be in. I'm going to click upload, I'm sorry, I'm gonna click new, link, and I'm going to paste my link right there. I can give my file name a, uh, or I can give the link a file name, and I don't want it to say formsoffice.com, I want it to say discovery responses, or maybe I want it to say client discovery responses. Um, perhaps I wanna put a date in there, that's completely up to you create that link and it puts that active URL link for your Microsoft Office form right there. Anybody in your organization can click on that link. Sorry I lost my video on this one guys, but as you can see when you click on that link, it's available to your entire organization. It's available to anyone who needs to get in there and look at the original discovery answers that your client gave to you. As you can see, Microsoft Forms is great for getting your clients to answer discovery, but what if you're not trying to answer discovery and you're just trying to get more information from your clients before you start litigating the case or during the process of litigation? Well, again, Microsoft Forms is a really great platform for that. If you're working in toxic torts and you are needing to work with a bunch of plaintiffs and gather all of their medical information and personal information, then Microsoft Forms is a really great way of gathering all of that information and generating reports that really break down the information that you've gotten. So Microsoft platforms, or I'm sorry, Microsoft Office is a really great diverse platform to incorporate into your practice to increase the efficiency of your workflows. While your clients are answering discoveries and filling out their forms, that saves you valuable time and you're able to perform other tasks in other cases or maybe that case. But regardless, you're not billing by the hour or you are billing by the hour, it's creating efficiency within your practice and your time management. There are some other applications out there like MailChimp and SurveyMonkey, but those sort of applications do not integrate with Microsoft Office 365. And really guys, if you're working in the Office 365 environment, that's what you want. You want to be able to incorporate it into your environment because Office 365 is a real-time collaboration platform. It is text searchable. So if you put in a keyword or phrase and your client has put it in there as an answer to their discovery questions, then it's gonna come up on your keyword search. So it's really a great platform to integrate into your office to create the efficiency and save yourself the time and the energy of painstakingly getting all of the discovery answers from your client. Start with the form. Start there, get the form to your client, get it emailed to them, get those responses back. Then if you need some clarification on something or you need a little bit more information, hop on the phone, give them a call and take that time to do that. But start with the efficient practice first. 
Another great thing to add is this is a great item to put on your resume as a new or current paralegal. This is one of those pieces of technology that lawyers are going to want to see and they might even ask you about it. How are you using Microsoft Forms or what is Microsoft Forms? And when you come back with a response of how it creates an efficient process of gathering answers from your discover or for your discovery from your clients, then hmm, how come I never thought about that? That just really shows how tech savvy you are in your interviewing. It shows how tech savvy you are during the process of you being a paralegal for that attorney. And they're gonna be much more appreciative of you taking the initiative and creating a process that increases your efficiency and it is just better for your time. As always, thank you so much for joining me today and don't forget to follow me on social media. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I want you to uh, go ahead and get on Facebook and get on the group Paralegal Boss Club. That is a new group that I started. I'm going to get on there and do some live Q and A's and get some content out there that you wouldn't normally get on my website or on this YouTube station here. So join me on social media, join my Paralegal Boss Club group. And of course, I hope you have a great, fantastic rest of your week, weekend, and I will see you again, I promise, next Wednesday. Bye guys.